A very good afternoon. My name is Alok Shrivastava from Network Nuts, and I welcome you to the second or the next or the third or whatever I don't remember uh, <laughs> which uh, video it is it in this uh, series. But I probably means I think it's third one or the second one. We we will be learning or diving more into the dockers. So first the approach is slightly different. I have changed a bit. First, I'll be showing you some slides. Uh, will make you understand the concepts, and then we'll be doing the labs. I hope you like the new shift. Right. So let's move further, not wasting much of your time. Your time is precious, so as mine, it's right. So number one thing, you should be able to search the Docker images using the Docker search command. So as you can see in the slide here, I am searching for the CentOS 7 image. So what it does provided you have got a uh, good internet connectivity your docker host will go to the docker hub and will search for all the images having the sent to a 7 tag or the name and uh, you should always uh, take care of uh, this the stars stars are very important it is something like the ratings and you should always try to use the official image as much as you can right so always look for the stars and try to use the official images just make sure you should be doing this okay i'll move further then right so when because that particular command the last command might flood you with a lot of images so if you are interested in seeing a particular image the docker gives you a very interesting option which is the filter so filter is something like uh, you you do a grep right so here in this example i'm trying to filter for all the sent to us images which are having stars 100 or above so just remember this one so this is the option which you can use to filter out certain types of images so see the output here i'm getting only the images which is having the stars greater than 100 199 which is the official image right and you can also use the head option which you know it will give will give you the top the top five uh, like the images right head you know what the head does use this then you can use the pull to pull a particular image i'll be showing you in the lab how to pull it this is now something very good so when you start a container right normally it does what it just start and then exit automatically you won't be given a footprint so where you where you can work so whenever you want to work on inside the container you should always use a option here hyphen it interactive and a pseudo terminal will be allocated to you so see here i had been given a terminal here here i am inside the docker container which is being given a container id and i am using the uh, the image fedora and the name of my container will be my fedora and the command which i am executing is bash bin bash so i am given this and whenever you want to do a exit please do the exit remember one thing i had very uh, like categorically mentioned here it won't stop the container it just exit from the shell remember this it won't stop the container it you will just merely exit like you do a exit from the terminal so do that and then uh, just remember one thing I'm going to sh uh, show it when I'll be doing the lab that whenever you start a container it will automatically allocate a unique ID to the container which is known as the container ID which is called the container ID a uh, container ID will be given right and uh, it will automatically assign a file system which is having the read write right but the changes will not be permanent unless you do a commit so I won't be discussing commit in this session we will be doing it in the later like the videos to come not right now and then it allocates a network bridge and interface how it does i will be again explaining you in the lab as i'm repeating myself again you won't learn by seeing these slides you will learn by doing it right so please give yourself a time 
some time and do the labs then it assigns IP address from the range and it execute the process and remember this location this location is very very important for you right what it does it this is the local uh, location where the containers will be stored where lib docker container so just remember this this is it I'm inside var lib docker container and for every container you have a unique ID and the complete container is running inside that so docker ps command will show you all the the currently running containers and the ps hyphen a will show you all the containers where, whether they are running or exited so see here all the containers here are exited I have done the exit from here and in case you are interested in seeing only the IDs the docker container IDs just use the command docker ps hyphen aq will give you only the containers ID right and in case you wanted to know only the last container which which was the last container that we run I forgot it right ps hyphen l will show you the name of the last the latest container or which you had just executed and once you are exited from a container you can attach yourself again by the command docker attach obviously you need to start it first first start it and then attach it so we will be doing all this thing in the labs and very interesting command docker log once you are attached in the container you might have created certain files and folders you you might have created some user accounts you wish to know what is being done inside the container once it is being started so docker logs and the name of the container will show you all the commands which the user had executed inside the container which is very important and in case you are interested in seeing the timestamp of the commands use hyphen t guys will show you the timestamp like here i had first start the container and then attach the container right same stuff docker ps will show you if you okay one uh, very kind of a strange thing if if you don't assign a name to your container docker is furious it he, like he is angry so he just assign a random name to it some funny names might be like adjective like like this one so it's better to assign a name you can pause and unpause the containers pause means you're freezing so if I pause this container I won't be able to do anything inside the container unless I do a unpause right do this lab I'll show it like pause and unpause right stop the container remove the container you you can stop a uh, like container like this so once it is coming up here when you stop it it's clearly sh saying it's being exited certain times ago and finally if you are not interested in using a container please uh, brace or like help yourself and free some resources some compute resources from your host by gracefully removing the container just make sure the container is removed and you can use this option very interested option that in case when you exit from a container I'll show it when you exit from a container it just exit it it won't remove the container in case you want to remove the container whenever you do exit please feel free to use hyphen hyphen rm command option with it right so once you had gone through the like understood the concepts it's a time to do the labs so let's move on and do the labs. shift our gears right so it's the time to do the lab so let's move ahead and shift the gears so number one thing we had already learned in the previous uh, session which I had done that you can upload uh, sorry download a, a image and run a container so in as I have told you earlier we will be diving more into the containers and how to control all those things which we had already seen in uh, in the slides so it's a time to do the implementation and do the lab so number one thing I can search for a particular image say if I give docker search and CentOS 7 so what it's going to do 
it's going to search for all the images on docker hub oh this is it my network is unreachable so let me check if whether i'm able to hit it or not dig no problem so let's check with my connectivity oh yes the lan card is off good to know sunday it is lazy right so if i again give let, let me check the connectivity yeah now i am able to connect to the google so if i do this docker search centos 7 it will show me all the images which are public images which are available on docker hub right it shows me all the things so here comes the official name so it is an official image you should always keep in mind whenever possible use the official image right i'll tell you why what are the reasons and it has got some ratings in the form of stars so it shows you all the things so and it gives you a lot of images all the centos images even the depreciated one which you might not be interested in so if we can do the filter let's suppose i want to look for the centos images having uh, rating or the stars more than 40 right so i can do it like this which i had already shown we had gone through the slide so docker search i can give centos 7 hyphen hyphen filter is equal to stars equal to say 40 now oh, sorry what happens stars not stars so here you will be getting the images which are having rating or the like stars more than 40 so that makes your life easier and you'll be uh, fast to pinpoint to a particular image so i can download this no problem so either i can just name it like this ansible center 7 or this is it this one or if you can search for the python also like this i can search for python so currently i have got these images i don't have a centos image so i can give a docker pull first check the filters right so i can give a docker pull and ansible sent to a seven hyphen ansible so this is the tag is the latest one and depending upon your network speed it is going to download the image in your local repository so we just need to wait for a moment before the download is completed so in the same manner you can download more images as and when required so just need to wait it won't uh, take much we have a decent speed in our office hope so <laughs> okay guys so so in the meanwhile what i can do i can pause the video here and when the upload sorry the download is done i will resume the video again right so as you can see it is being downloaded so if i give the docker images i have got this ansible downloaded right so in the same manner i can download more images say i can say docker search python so it will give me all the python images and i can download any image like this one python right which is having a very good decent amount of stars so i can give a docker pull python so keep on building your repository in the manner again i'll just pause it and we will resume when it is done right so this one is also downloaded so let's move further if i have multiple images now i have got python image i have got alpine i have got centos so let's try to start a container right so i can simply give the command docker run interactive i is interactive t it will assign a sudo terminal name you can assign it anything say i say my fedora 
right i i can start with the fedora image and then the image which i want to use is the fedora so after this write fedora and which process you want to start so let me give a shell to myself pin bash so this has just started a container see so now let's understand whenever we start a container what happened right so i had just started a container so i'll just open another terminal here so that way we'll be checking it what is going on under the hood right so if i give a docker ps command you will see i'm getting a information about the containers which are running currently running right now what happens when the container starts understand this this slide will help you whenever you start the container the docker it allocates a unique id to the container which is called the container id so in my case this is the container id right okay what it does again it allocates a file system and mount a read write layer for the container any changes on the layer will be temporary and will be discarded if i will not commit it i'll show you how to commit those things so that means i have a file system here if i just go here and if i give a df h i've got a whole file system mounted for me which is done and it allocates me a network interface or we call it a bridge interface i will not be going into the details of docker container networking right now but understand it allocates a ip address to you to the machine so if the packages are installed i should be able to run if config or we have to install the packages no oh, it is not available but i'll show you what happens when you install the docker if i give a nmcli connection show it creates a bridge named as docker right and all the machines which all the containers which you are starting will be attached to this bridge if i show you we have one container ru uh, running right and even the ip as command ip address show command will show you a docker bridge so any machine or any container which you are running will automatically be assigned the ip from this range i can reconfirm it that my container the this centos container which i have just started is attached to the bridge if i can give a brctl show docker 0 see there is a web interface a virtual ethernet device connected to it so that means if i will create one more container i i should have that container also connected to this docker bridge right so let me start one more container i'll open one more terminal that way the things will be very clear to you i'm not going in details i'll repeat again sorry a blunder in the spelling <laughs> so i give docker run the same command i'll give it hyphen if a name this time let me install alpine right alpine cont and the image is alpine and i say bin bash or sh shell so one more container is running so if i go back to this and give you the docker ps command it shows me two containers are running and if i again give the some command brctl docker can you see it there are two web interfaces connected to this docker so just stop it here just understand we have a docker bridge which is connect which is automatically being created by the docker daemon on the host machine which is this machine and all the containers will be connected to that and so it uh, it assigns ip address to it and it executes the process specified by the user so in this case because i had specified what what the shell so the shell is given to me right and which i can confirm by giving this command which process is being started by the user so and because this is i think my i can give a etc 
Red Hat release, it says Fedora release 29, which I am running. Okay, and now the pop, uh, one uh, you might be intrigued in knowing where these containers are getting stored. Very valid, very valid point. So remember, guys, whenever you start a container, Docker will automatically create. A container ID under this folder where lib docker container so for every container we have a unique directory inside this location let's check it out so if I go to where lib docker containers and you will have one ID for each container right so not going in detail into this but this is what is happening right move further so docker ps i had already shown you docker ps will show you the currently running uh, containers it it won't show you the like the containers which are exited exit means what if i just do a exit from this container so it won't stop the container remember it won't stop it just exit it like we exit from this terminal if i do a exit from this terminal that will not stop the machine it will only exit me out of this terminal right so if I give a docker ps, it will only show me the container which is not exited, it's still running. So how can I view all the containers which are exited of this? So just give a hyphen A. So it will show you exit status that this container is being exited. It's not stopped, right? And in case you are more interested in seeing only the containers IDs, just add a Q here. So only the container IDs will be given, right? and you want to get the last container created what was the which was the last container which which someone has created just give a l here it will show you the last the last container created on this docker host so just remember these things this might be very handy for you okay so how can i attach myself to this container which is exited you need to give the command docker attach so because I am out of this Fedora, right? So I give docker attach and either you can give the name or the ID. It doesn't matter. Paste it here. So oh, see, it's it say it stopped because it is exited. So what I need to do, I need to do a start first. Start and then do a attach. So I'm again inside the container. So I, I can create certain things there, say, I created a directory here mkdir alloc so a directory is being created alloc no problem right and you can get information about what is going on inside a container by the docker log command so I am going on to another terminal I give the command docker ps so I have these containers running so I had created my folder in this right my fedora so I give the command docker log and my fedora. It will show you, sorry, I always do some small typo errors. See, it tells you what has been done in that container so far. See, mkdir is coming, ls is coming. Isn't it wonderful that if you are uh, like working on on a remote machine just connect to your docker host and give the command docker logs and the name of the container will you will be getting all the information what is being currently done in the container right and in case you want the timestamps also hey fine mkdir command is run but when when the command was executed so just add a hyphen t here very simple guys so the timestamp will be coming straight away right so you need to understand how to start a container how to attach a container so I had already shown you if you exit it you have to do a start and then attach okay so I'll just give the command docker ps these are the containers and this is it so you you might be uh, like the names which I, I had given if I don't give a name it will automatically assign a name to it some random name let me show it so if I start another container here uh, here also I'll run it I give docker run interactive 
right i'm not giving any name i run the image fedora and i say bin bash right one more container is there so if i open another terminal and just for the sake of the lab i'm opening too many terminals for you and if i give docker ps you will see it automatically assigns him a random name adoring yellow or whatever i it doesn't make sense to me whatever right so i can pause the container also pause means when you pause the container you are freezing the execution of the process then you won't be able to do anything see here i'll give you a practical example here it's my container i'm able to do some things i'm able to run some commands and all the things right it's active so if i freeze it ending with 71f if i freeze this container this one i copy this and this is the here it is it is running here here so if i do a docker freeze or pause sorry and the container id freeze that means if i click here it will not respond see i'm pressing enter i'm doing a lot of things it just freezes right and whenever you want to resume it you just have to give unpause right now again ending with 71f where it is where it is here it is it started again working so you can freeze by the pause and unfreeze by unpause and how can you stop a uh, like container i just if i exit it it's not stopped it's exited so i am exiting from here and if i give a command docker ps obviously 71f will not come here but if i give a docker ps hyphen a it will come here that it is exited now i can stop it by just give the command docker stop and the container id just copy it here and paste it it stopped so it won't see the change here i'm giving the same command right it is exited from from here and saved now i can remove the container docker remove see because it's still consuming your resources so this one is the one copy paste exited sorry removed now if i give the same command the container is gone from here right this is how you can uh, some simple task for maintaining your containers which you can easily do it and another thing that you can do is that because if you have noticed whenever you exit from the container it won't stop sorry it uh, it won't remove itself it just stop it just have the status of exit so if you want to stop a container whenever or remove the container entirely when you are exiting from like from it there is a very interesting option which you can give whenever you are running a container right just right here hyphen hyphen rm so what it does as soon as you exit it will seize it see i am running it the container is running so if i go to any terminal and check it out it is ending with uh, 337 so docker ps is showing you 337 perfect right and docker ps hyphen a is obviously showing you all the things and no one is exited 337 is there some random name is coming up now because i have used hyphen hyphen rm command as soon as i do exit here what it does it, it it just don't exit it removed it from here also see it's not it's removed it just stopped it entirely right So hi hyphen hyphen rm, you wish the container to be removed automatically when whenever you do the exit, it can be done, right? So you should be able to do these basic things on the on the Docker containers, so like starting, stopping, pause, unpause, and checking the process. Hi hyphen hyphen rm is a very good option, and the location. So just do till now up till here, and then in the next. uh session we'll be diving more into the docker thank you very much bye bye god bless